G'day, it's Darren here from Craftsmith, and thanks for tuning in. Today, what we're going to do is a bit of an extension to a previous video that I've done, and I will hopefully be able to pop a link, uh, if not up in the right-hand corner. It will be down in the description section, so you can go back and have a look at that one. And basically, what we're looking at is getting faster burn times with our engraving projects. In, in that video, we basically went through a couple of techniques, which we'll go through again today, just as a, a refresher, but to show you how uh, working with different objects, uh, we can actually make things a little bit quicker. So let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a basic frame. So this might be a frame that you might be uh, engraving on a breadboard or or whatever the case might, might be a mirror or something like that. You just, uh, whatever might take your fancy. So I'm just going to take a, a very basic frame and you can, you can apply this technique to any frame really. So this is in fill mode. So in order to create a frame, I'm just going to do an offset here. So I'm pressing on the offset shapes and this one doesn't really matter what the distance is. It's just going to be an outward uh, distance offset, which in this case is 13.2 millimeters. And that's all I want to do there. So we've just got a basic shape there, just a, a, a very standard type frame, but it, it'll, it'll show the example quite well. So I'm just going to drag from right to left and anything that is, is contained within that green circle, any objects, it will highlight the whole objects. Whereas uh, what we showed in the other video is if I drag from the left, uh, it has to be fully enclosed within that box to uh, be selected. So because I didn't fully enclose anything there, it doesn't uh, select it. But if I go over the whole lot, same sort of outcome. So what I'm going to do here is just make this one shape. So currently it's two shapes. So I'm just going to go over to the left-hand work panel here and it's weld all selected shapes together. So that's what I've done. And you can now kind of see that it's transformed it into one shape. And this is where th this example will uh, really sort of work quite well for us uh, to show exactly the techniques that we're going to be using. What we're going to do is we want to... Uh, run through the process of having a look at the uh, burn times using the techniques that we were talking about yesterday. So here we've just got a standard fill and it's set to the power and speed settings for the, the substrate that I'm going to be engraving on. So whether it be plywood or MDF or something like that, it doesn't really matter what those are. But if we just have a look at our uh, double click on here to have a look at our settings and we can see we've got over scanning and it's just normal fill and we're going to be doing fill all shapes at once. So we have a look at that one and check our engrave time. And we can see there it's an hour and 23 minutes. Now it doesn't matter in this case because it's only one object. If I double click back into here and I say fill groups together and have a look at the burn time, it's exactly the same because it's still one shape. All right, so there's, well, it's still one group because there's only one object there. So this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. Yesterday we were talking about uh, doing breaking it into groups and doing it that way. So I'm going to leave it on that setting. So we're fill, filling groups together. So we now need to somehow split this in half so we can create two groups. So we're going to, we're going to create a, a left side and we're going to create a right side. And it took me a little while to sort of figure out how to actually do that. So I had to watch some tutorials and um, it's actually quite simple. So all we need to do is we're just going to create another shape here. So it's going to be, I'm just selecting the rectangle box. And if I mouse over the thing, the shape here, so you can see there where it's actually turned to an X in the middle. I'll go off it again. And if I come back onto it, we can see, so we know that that's actually the middle of that object. So I'm just going to draw an a uh, rectangle here and in this instance I just need to extend it out beyond both sides so we can see here it's a bit like a yin and yang so we've got uh, we know that that's going to be cut in half now in order to cut that in half first of all we need to select the object with that we wish to cut which is the the frame so I'm going to just select that one so we can see that that's now selected and holding down the shift button I'm going to select the other object so now that's the that's what I'm going to be cutting with essentially. So under the tool section, if we go down to here, we can see this uh, command cut shapes. So if I click on that one, cut shapes, 
And we can now see we've got one group over here. It's, it's basically been cut in half and we've got another one over here. So that's given us our two groups. So if we look at that now in our preview, so I haven't changed anything, we're gonna do it by groups. Our initial one was one hour, 23 minutes. And we can see now that we've dropped that down to 31 minutes. So again, a significant saving. And I'm just gonna do a little calculation while we're sort of looking at that one. It was one hour, 23, which was 60, 83 minutes. And the new time is 31 minutes. So that is 37% of the original burn time. So it's almost three times as fast just by using that technique. So that again highlights how we can save some significant time. And particularly if this was a bigger job, okay? So let's say we we're gonna, um, we had a much bigger piece that we wanted to frame. Uh, might be, let's, let's say it was a mirror and we're going to do a frame around a mirror. And uh, if it was a much bigger mirror, it would take a lot longer. So this way, by using this technique and just cutting this shape in half, it's now two shapes and essentially two groups, then um, it's saved us a, a lot of time. Now, I'm just going to back that up a little bit. So I'm just going to undo that and look at another technique which is the offset fill. So under here we have the mode, which is currently fill. And if I can, if I set that to offset fill and how that actually works is it works in concentric circles. Okay, so it starts at the, um, on the inside here. And you can see it's just going around and round um, and continuing around that whole object. So this works if you have a solid fill, right? Because it's we're doing that whole engrave and it, it will actually work quite well. And looking at that one, the total estimated time is 27 minutes. And if we compare that to the other one, it's a little bit faster. So the other method, we got down to 31 minutes with the offset fill. And in this case, I'd be happy to use offset fill because of the, the path that it takes. It's not putting any undue stress on the laser head itself and the stepper motors. But there, there is an instance where offset fill may not be the best option for you if you're using a, a frame that might have multiple elements to it. So we're going to have a look at that now. So let me just get rid of that one. So I'm just going to bring that one onto the canvas there. And I'm going to go to offset fill. And if we have a look at this one, it's going to rasterize that. It's generating the offset fills. And because there's a lot of complex shapes there, it's, it's going to... Oy, here we go. Look at that one. It's gone a little bit crazy. It looks like a three-year-old's grabbed out a red pen marker and just gone crazy. But what we can see, if I zoom in on this one, you can start to see the patterns of how that is going to engrave. And you can start to see the paths. And it's just got these wacky, wacky paths all the way around everywhere. It does chop it down to 48 minutes. So it's, it's more than twice as quick to do it that way. But if we look at the the stresses that we might be putting on the stepper motors and all of that sort of thing for a hobby laser, that may not be the uh, best outcome for our laser. So this would not be a very effective technique to use the offset fill for this type of a shape. As I mentioned, if it's just a solid shape and a solid border, no problem at all because it's just gonna follow these concentric outward circles and it's going to give us a, a nice sort of clean finish. And it's going to be a little bit quicker than we, uh, our other method. But in this case, for this type of engrave, it just would not be suitable at all, in my opinion. But I'm not an expert. What we are going to do, we're going to apply that same technique where we're just going to split this in half and see what sort of... So we're going to change that back to fill. We're going to split it in half. So I'm going to find the center. Oh, there's the center. I'm just going to start drawing. And then I'm going to make it 
big enough that it's going to cut down right down the center. The process is you first select the item that you wish to cut, which is the frame, and then holding down the shift, I'm going to select the rectangle. And if I go under tools, I'm going to do cut shapes. So now you can see that it's automatically we've got a left side and we've got a right side. So we've got our two pieces there. And I'm not doing anything different there. We're just going to have a look at our, uh, just make sure that we have selected fill groups together, which is fine. And if we have a look at that preview, we can see there that's an hour and seven minutes. So it's almost twice as quick, but it's going to be far less taxing on your laser because it's just going left to right, left to right, left to right uh, in these groups. And we're eliminating, the whole purpose of this is to eliminate all of that white space in the middle there from actually engraving. So I'll just show you on the traverse lines again. We're going to eliminate all of that white space that would normally just in a normal fill mode with a single object, it's going to go left to right, left to right across the whole thing. And we're going to be wasting all of this space where we're, the, the laser is doing nothing and we can be far more productive by using this method. So it's going to significantly 50% increase in your uh, or double the speed, basically just about double the speed. And that's a good outcome. So if you were doing this for a client and whether you do jobs for clients or those sorts of things, I'm not at that stage yet. But if I know that I can do a job in half the time, it means my return on my time investment is going to be far greater. And it's going to be less wear and tear potentially on the laser as well and means you can get on to the next job. So that's the techniques that we covered and I just thought it was worthwhile running through that explanation of the offset fill as well to give you a better understanding of the types of scenarios where offset fill is suitable and where it might not be suitable. So generally from what I have seen, the you can apply the offset fill when it's a solid shape, a solid border and that will work totally fine. It doesn't work particularly well if you've got these uh, multiple objects that it's going to be sort of filling in. With all of this extra detail, offset fill is not going to be very, even though it's faster, it may not give you the results that you're looking for. And it certainly, like I said, in my opinion, is putting a lot more wear and tear on your laser. So there you have it. Hopefully you've got something out of that one and we've demonstrated another couple of techniques there on how you can quickly and easily cut objects in, in half. Uh, well, you can apply the same principle to cut into more sections if you like, whatever makes sense for the burns that you're doing or the engraves that you're doing. And if you have got something out of it, I would love if you could give us a big thumbs up. And I look forward to catching you on the next one where we can all learn together and uh, be able to do things just that little bit better and a little bit faster. So in the meantime, make sure that you create every day and be grateful. Bye for now.